Today we look at the structure of the nerves within the nervous system. Just a quick recap on the previous video, which of these three terms describe the parts of the nervous system? Okay, the answers would be spinal cord, the nerves and the brain. Because we have the brain and spinal cord which makes up the central nervous system and then we have the peripheral nerves of the spine. Maybe we think about the cells of the nervous system and their overall structure. So neurons are just another word for nerves. They are special cells of the nervous system that conduct electrical impulses, electrical signals throughout the body, and um, they go to and from the central nervous system, so to and from the brain and spinal cord. So we have the nerve as a whole and then these little nerve fibres inside. A nerve is just a bundle of lots of different nerve fibres enclosed within this protective sheath. Nerve fibres are the long axons of neurons together with any associated tissues. So inside these lines is actually lots of little bundles of nerve fibres. So neurons are elongated cells, which means they're kind of stretched out. They consist of the cell body here, which does most of the functions of a normal cell. So you've got the cytoplasm here, which actually runs all the way to the end of what's called the axon. And we've got the nucleus in the middle. So the nucleus is still a control center of the cell. It still has all the DNA, chromosomes, and makes all the proteins. Um, we have the cytoplasm, which is the site of most chemical reactions. You can see here there are things called dendrites. Now, other nerves and sensory cells around this one will feed information into it through these dendrites. The information will come in and then needs to get from here to somewhere way over here. So actually what we need is a tunnel or passageway to get from the cell body, which gathers the information together, to wherever that information is being sent. And it goes along this corridor or passageway, which is called the axon. So the information is sent along in the form of electrical signals. On the outside of the axon, there is this thing called a myelin sheath. Now this insulates it and stops the electrical signals kind of leaking out on the way. When it gets to the end, it reaches something called the synapse, and that's what connects it to the dendrites of the next cell. So you can see three different shapes here. So we have what's called sensory neurons, interneurons, and we've got motor neurons. Um, sensory neurons tend to take information from sensory cells and transfer it to um, the central nervous system. Interneurons are like a relay between different types of neurons. So information might come from a sensory neuron and go into an interneuron and then either travel up to the brain or connect to a motor neuron. And motor neurons are um, a way of spreading information out into the body. So information will come in from the brain and then it'll come along and it'll go out to what are called effectors. So here we go. Sensory neurons transmit electrical impulses from the sense organs. So our senses are sight and touch and hearing and taste. Um, and possibly there's another one, I can't really remember which ones I've said already. Um, you could pause here and think, if you had to choose one of those senses to lose, which one would you choose? Would you rather live your entire life without being able to taste, without being able to see? without being able to smell, without being able to hear, or without being able to feel or touch or anything. So nerve impulses come from the sense organ. If you put your hand on a table, there are sensory cells that feel the pressure and the touch, and they um, attach on to a sensory neuron. So the information will come off the touch sensor, it'll go into the dendrites, and it will travel all the way along to the um, central nervous system. And from there, it will go up towards the brain. So we have the interneurons, which are present in the sensory nervous, uh, central nervous system. They transmit the electrical impulses from the sensory neurons back to motor neurons or up towards the brain. The motor neurons transmit electrical impulses from the interneurons, so inside the central nervous system, to the muscles and glands. If you want your pancreas to make a particular hormone, you have to tell it to make the hormone. So your brain will send out a signal in the um, interneurons and then to the motor neurons, and the motor neuron will attach to that gland and it will say, hey, I want you to produce some hormones. So that's us talking about the basic structure of the different types of nerve cells.
In the next section, we look at the central nervous system and its ability to bring around a conscious response. So the flow of information. Receptors in our sense organs. We talked about touching the table in front of us and feeling that pressure. They detect information from our surroundings via the sensory inputs. So sensing something, touching, smelling, hearing. The information is the stimulus. So the information that comes in, be that light, be that sound, be that touch, taste, smell, whatever, that is the stimulus. It's the thing that's kind of stimulating your body. That will trigger off an electrical impulse in the sensory cells. This impulse is carried along a sensory neuron. So we have the stimulus in the sense organ, the sensory neuron taking that electrical signal to the central nervous system. And within the central nervous system, so brain and spinal cord, it will travel up the interneurons. The, sensor, uh, the central nervous system will think about that information from the senses. It will process it. So if you um, put your hand on something that is hot, you might see the flame, you might smell the burning, you might feel the heat, and together your brain will take all that sensor information together and it will say, I am touching something that is on fire. So CNS processes that information. And then if, for example, you put your hand on something hot, your brain might think, hey, I should probably move my hand. So it will send information down the interneurons to the motor neurons, to the effectors, the things that cause something to change in your body. And in this case, that'd be the muscles of your forearm, which would lift your hand away from the hot thing. That is the response. This can be quite a rapid action from a muscle or a slower response from a gland. So here is a summary diagram. See if you can pause for a second and work out what you think would go in each of these blanks. OK. So the bell ringing would be a stimulus. It's detected by the receptors of the ear. Also, you might see the bell ringing, so you might also see the receptors in the eyes. So there's the stimulus detected by the receptors in the ear. The information will travel along as impulses in the sensory neurons. It will, uh, so information is uh, sensed or stored, it doesn't really matter. And then impulses travel along the motor neuron. The effector is a muscle and response is running for lunch. So we're going to find out about reflex arcs. This is the last little part of this video. So we've talked about quite slow things. You hear a bell and you think, oh, it's, it's the end of lunchtime. Oh, what did I have for lunch? Did I remember to eat my sandwich? And then you think, oh, I should probably go in. There's quite a distance between having that stimulation of your sense organs and having a response. Sometimes that needs to be quicker. Sometimes you need a reflexive response, maybe one that your body completely takes out your conscious control and just does for you. Is these are reflexes and they usually happen when a stimulus is potentially harmful or evolution has said we need to automate this process to make sure you don't fall out of a tree so they're usually involuntary and they're caused by the central nervous system sending electrical impulse signals to the muscles before it's really had a time to process the information so this is a box that's in your um your notes so choking on food you would cough and clear your windpipe. Dust particles would come into your nose and you would sneeze to clear the nasal passages. Dust particles might come into your eye and you might blink to clear the surface. And touching a hot iron, you might withdraw your hand, removing your body from the extreme heat source. Interestingly, babies are born with reflexes that adults do not have. Um, in evolutionary history, um, we used to carry our babies uh, on our chests and backs when we were climbing in trees or high areas. And the baby would be uh, holding on to the mother and then sometimes she would move her arms and the baby was no longer holding on to the mother um, and starts to fall. So there's something called the moral reflex where if you are a slightly sedated person, I may have tried this on my newborn son, and you drop them or you jerk as if you're going to drop them, they will fan all four of their limbs out into a big cross shape and try and suddenly grasp at something to hold on to. Um, that is because in 
evolutionary response that was an important enough um response to have that it was fully automated by the body there's other things like if you can newborn baby and tickle the cheek just the side of its face it will turn towards your finger and it will root on that finger so it will suck on the finger that's because that is feeding from a nipple is a very important evolutionary process that you want a baby to be able to do without thinking so if you tickle the side of its cheek, it will turn and it will um, suck onto the finger. They've got a grasping reflex, reflex. So if you put a finger in their hand, they will hold on to it. And they've got stepping reflexes as well. So you can hold them just um, above a flat surface and they will move their feet as if they're walking. So these are reflexes um, that were designed to help our newborn infants survive. And they're kind of left over from when we were um, not quite as evolved. The reflexes are fast, they're automatic, they're protective, and they link a stimulus response without your brain needing to get involved. So they happen when you don't need to think about them, they're involuntary, and that's because the central nervous system goes from sensory to inter to motor without needing to involve your brain. Often then the signal gets to your brain and you think, ah, my hand hurts, but it's already well away from the flame. So um, reflex reactions are rapid, they are automated or automatic, so they're involuntary, and they are protective. They allow you to react quickly to a dangerous stimulus without having to think about it. So try and fill this in. So I was kind of hoping some words would appear. So we have the um, stimulus um, sensed by um, sensory cells. Um, information sent to sensory neuron. Sensory neuron carries information to our central nervous system. This would be the interneuron. So information transferred from interneuron to motor neuron. Motor neuron carries a um, signal to effector. Effector completes response. Um, response is to avoid harmful stimulus, something like that. That is off the top of my head, but it does cover the basic idea that a sensory stimulus is coming in, going through sensor, uh, sensory neurons, interneurons, motor neurons, and avoiding the nasty thing. So this is just a summary of the reflex art. Here you can uh, pause it and look through it if you want. And that just completes it. So this again is just several slides saying the same thing. An electrical impulse is sent to the CNS. The interneuron passes it immediately to the motor neurons as well as up towards the brain. And the effect or the thing that causes the effect um, does its thing and gives its response and you're no longer in danger. If we were in school, we could do a ruler drop experiment, which you can have at home, where you get one person to hold the ruler just above your hand and then they suddenly let go and you try and grasp onto it as quickly as possible. Um, there's also a sheep darting game on uh, the computer on the internet that you can find if you Google it. Sheep dart response challenge. Um, and there's lots of other things. There's playing ninja as well. If you want to Google the um, rules for the game ninja, you can play that with your family, friends and siblings. It's not particularly COVID compliant, so I would uh, suggest you maybe just play with family members. Okay, and yet another summary of reflex arcs, which you can look at. You can also um, doctors test for reflexes in reflexor muscles by hitting you with a tendon hammer just below the knee, and you get a knee jerk. And another diagram that summarizes it. In the next uh, lesson, we will look at synapses of the nervous system and complete this topic. Hopefully that made some sense. If you've got any problems with it, please do ask, can I, yeah. So your booklet had a space for you to um, fill in parts of the brain. Hopefully you've done that already. It's got the neurons here. So it's sensory into motor neurons and their functions. So picking up sensory stimuli from the um, sensory receptors and passing it to the CNS, transferring information either to a motor neuron or to the brain and motor neurons and passing information from the central nervous system or into neurons to an effect where we've got a diagram that was in the um, slides. We've got this that was in the slides. Some of this was um, 
there as well, so you can watch the video to cover that. And again, this table was in the um, video. Like one part was, yeah, this table was in the video, and so was that one. And that one as well. <laughs> so just write in, it doesn't matter exactly the words you use. Um, this is just practice going through the process. Next lesson, we'll look at synapses, which you can see is not a massive part of the course, really. Okay.